The following program is paid for by EG Tax. All opinions or statements expressed on this program are solely those of EG Tax or its guests and do not reflect the opinions of News Radio 930 WBEN or Odyssey. This program has been pre recorded. Hi, I'm Esther Gullius, the Tax Lady. This is Ask the Tax Lady. And this week, we're going to just be answering emails. Uh, and we invite you, if you have any tax questions and you think you'd like answered um, on air, you can go to our website at egtax.com. Right this time of year, uh, being mid-September, we have our tax school coming up. Uh, So if you think that you might be interested in learning taxes, we can teach you. It's a tuition-free course. The only expense is a book. You will be so smart at the end, and you will understand when they're talking politics, you'll understand what they're saying. And again, if you're interested in our tax school, go to our website at egtax.com. And we also have an inflation-busting seminar that we're going to be doing in October to help you to maybe shrewdly use some of the tax Uh, loopholes in the law to take money out uh, that isn't taxable or to move money around so it isn't taxable uh, and help you with uh, inflation. And again, you can go to our website at egtax.com for that. And I got my buddies in studio with me again, Tiffany Fabian. Hey, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to you, Tiff. And Christopher. Hello, Esther. Hello, Christopher. Okay, we got emails we do we're going to start off with one that's going to get your blood boiling Uh uh-oh okay tax lady i did something really stupid last year i was advised to pay off all my debt before i retire (laughs) you should see esther's face so i ended up paying off my mortgage and credit card debt totaling a hundred and forty thousand dollars the stupid thing was I took it out of my 401k, and now I owe the IRS and New York State a combined $40,000 approximately. Do you know, is there anything I can do and not get in any more financial nightmares? I wish you would have called before. I mean, that's he is a perfect example of what we're talking about, is when we say, before you do the move, any financial move, just call us. Because what we'll do is we'll say, if you do this, it's going to cost you 40000 So now you owe 40000 and the money has already been spent paying bills. Yeah. And it says before he retires. I don't know his age. If he's under 59 and a half, he might owe, an, he might owe another $14,000. 14, right. right. There could have been a penalty involved. I mean, yep. it, oh, it just breaks your heart. Right. It breaks my heart. Anyway. Right. And the thing, you know, because maybe, you know, I could see other people saying, okay, well, you owe 40000 Just take it out of your 401k. Again. Well, that's mm-hmm. going to create the snowball effect. Right. You know, a reverse snowball. It's going to get smaller and smaller, but you're still creating more debt. He should actually, he paid off his house, I hate to say it, Do but home, home equity. equity. Because yeah. now he has 30 because borrowed years. borrowed money is not taxable. So right. going to the well again, your 401k well, and taking out another 40 is going to cost you maybe 12000 in taxes. So, But if you borrowed the money, that's tax-free. And that's part of what, we, what we're going to talk about in our seminar, the right. inflation-busting seminar. There's money to go to. There's, there's a well you can go to that costs no taxes then there's another well if you go to it and they are going to slap your hands silly mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm. yep yep yeah. and even though he may take out a third i know other people people out there are probably going but i don't want to take a 30-year loan well you take a 30-year loan because it's a smaller payment and say it's 500 dollars a month can i pay extra of course so then it may only take me five years to pay it off. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we know a good guy. I mean, you could use anybody out there, but Jesse at Cross State Funding, um, I know we've used them personally. for They do home equities, and he can run the numbers and tell you what the interest rate is. And so just um, that's a really And I know people say, but I don't want to pay 6% interest. Okay, you'd rather pay 40% in taxes, <laughs> right? I mean- 40 yeah. if you're paying 6% in interest and you're putting extra on the principal you it it would if if you're doing 7 years 
of payments, you need seven years of payments to equal what you're going to pay in one fell swoop if you take it out of a taxable vehicle like your 401k. Yeah, and then a lot of people are like, oh, I'll just set up a payment plan with the IRS. The IRS oh, is good. Very, and, oh, they're fun very to deal costly. With. Uh-huh. They, the, the fees, uh, they just, I mean, I, it makes your eyes pop out of your head. Yep. I mean, not a good plan to set up a payment plan with the IRS. I mean, if you have to, you it, can. It was interesting because I, I had a client a couple years ago, was two years ago, and he's, they were building a house. Yeah. And he said, I'm taking, I want to pay cash for building my house. And I'm taking the money out of my pension plan. And I, I advised him not to do it. This is how much it's going to cost you in taxes. And quite frankly, he was not happy that I was shooting down his idea. So then this year when they came in was after the deed was done. And I said, so this is your tax liability. And she looked at him and said, how can we owe so much money? And he said, we have no mortgage. I said, no, you're now going to pay all this money in taxes. Yep. Mm. So that's why being smart about where the money comes from in the long run is the best thing to do because there are angles from your tax liability that you can mo- get money from that cost far, far, far less. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so um, that's one. That was one. Um, and so just give us a call, too, if you have any questions. Uh, Jay says, Esther, please help. I just became the power of attorney for my brother. After reviewing all of his files, I should have say piles of paperwork is what I should say it looks like he hasn't filed a tax return in seven years that would be right around when he started his cancer treatments what should I do well first of all not everybody has to file a tax return correct you have to have enough taxable income to file a tax return there are plenty of sources of income that are tax-free such as va benefits Mm -hmm. maybe if you have no taxable uh, other forms of income maybe your social security is completely tax-free if uh, his income when it's all added together plus half his social security is under twenty five thousand. i mean uh you know, maybe he's been living on withdrawing money out of his savings account. That's another tax-free source of, of income. So it all depends on what you find out. If the IRS has not been writing him, either he has refunds coming or he didn't have to file. <laughs> and that's really important. If he did have refunds coming, you can certainly file for um, him the last few years and um, those or, or if he has balance dues you have to settle as a state it's the law and uh, you have to file those tax returns and you know we can help you with that it's an easy process and then it sounds like you're over your head with paperwork if you have to we could get a copy of his tax transcripts and we could use that to find out what his income was and, and the nice thing is that we're straight sh- shooters and obviously knowledgeable and we'll answer those questions it, does he have to file i think know? that's a great point Tiff, because when we contacted the irs everything they got mm-hmm. that was sent in that the money came in was taxable um they already know and so they basically give us a copy of that so that we already know whether or not he has to file a return he might have refunds coming like tiffany said but let's just say the worst case scenario is that he really owes money right 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 and so you're going no but can you not do an offer and compromise on that situation yeah you can if um (laughs) <laughs> doubt to if he has no ass- assets, right? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have a lot of doubt to collectability. Well, so. he's definitely gone. So right. We'll, so, right? yep, you can absolutely do an offer and compromise. And so it's a nice program that the IRS has set up for people who don't have much money and they have this debt hanging over their head. So give us a call okay. and we can seed it out and weed it out and see if you're a candidate. All right. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. We're going to take a short commercial break. We'll be back on the other side. Hi, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. Thanks for listening to Ask the Tax Lady. I have Tiffany Fabian, Christopher Fabian. We're here in studio today and we're chewing up the emails that we got. Um, again, if you want to be part of our uh, 
radio um, email uh, shows. You can go to e- at egtax.com, ask the tax lady, put something in there and uh, your question, and we may be using it at a future show. Right. And, you know, going back to Jay, feel sorry for him, first of all, and your brother. Um, but he may have gotten those letters because if it, if right. they're all over a desk, right. he doesn't know. But what you happens? Mean letters from the IRS. Letters from the saying, IRS saying, the, we did your return. Right? Yeah. We think you owe money. What happens if you ignore those letters? Because we see people who try to do that. Well, the, it doesn't. The, the liability doesn't go away. Doesn't go away. And the executor, who's in in charge of the estate, has to administrate the estate and pay those tax liabilities, which now have compounded because of interest and penalties. That's why I said to Tiff, if we could do an offer and compromise, they can see that the guy right. was dying. Uh, right, right. But I'm just what I was trying to get at is, it, because it sounds like his brother's still alive. They could be having a. They could put a levy on his bank account. That's true. Which means on, and all of his assets. On all his assets, which means they could have already went into his bank account and taken his some of the money to pay some of the debt. That's true, especially if he if he's not well. Right, and, and that's s- why that transcript is important. Right. right, and so if he does have cancer treatments, he could have big medical bills, which then where the IRS doesn't know that. Right. They projected a return based on income, not expenses. Right. He could be at a refund now, so you could file those returns and get that money back. Right, good idea. So, definitely, you got to we got to look at ignorance everything. is not a good thing in taxes, mm-hmm. not at all. Right, mm-hmm. because you can absolutely shoot yourself in the foot. That's right. All right, we have another. Um, okay, so this is Roberta. Esther, I want to, that sounded weird. I'm sorry. I want to sell my rental property. I'm worried about the tax consequences. I can sell the house for $275,000. We bought it in 1999 for $120,000. I I heard that I have to recapture the depreciation. What does that mean? My husband took care of all the taxes until he passed in 2022. How much should I keep aside for taxes? He always said it was something happens to me. I need to call you immediately. Uh. Oh, that's sweet. That's okay, really sweet. so why don't we explain what it means by recapturing the depreciation and how really there might have been suspended losses too, right? Right, right. So the first question, what is recapture depreciation? Well, every year you had that property, Roberta, so since 1999, you got to write off one twenty seventh of the purchase price of that house against your rent. So you are subtracting it from your income. Well, now the government says, well, when you sell it, you, we want that money back, basically, that you saved. So that basis of 120000 let's see, it's about 20, it's almost fully written off. We'll say that house, if there's no capital improvements, no nothing, is only worth ten thousand dollars for tax purposes, so you could be looking at gain of two sixty five. Well, okay, I just want to clarify because it's not like the house is only worth ten thousand. The IRS says after you wrote it all, you you have taken this systematic de- depreciation. The basis of the house went down and down and down, and for tax purposes, they're saying you only paid ten thousand dollars. That's right. right. Which means the difference between the ten thousand and the two seventy five less expensive sale is going to be a gain. So it's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Well, let's dive into this question. <laughs> My husband took care of all the taxes until he passed in twenty twenty two. So she has a stepped-up basis depending upon who, who oh, owns the house. Right. She at least has a half-stepped-up basis. Right. which will help. Which will help drastically. Right. Or she could have a full stepped-up basis because it could have only been, been in, in his, his name. name. Right. Can you imagine if somebody did that tax return who didn't know that or didn't know that part of the law? Right, and they would pay overpay by oh, tons of tax. All right, I'm going to throw another Sure. Monkey, monkey into in the wrench. monkey wrench. <laughs> Let's say their income was three hundred thousand a year. It right. was stuffed losses. The, I mean, they they were it was, they were suspended losses, rainy right. day losses. So what happens with rental property? They will not allow you to take 
that depreciation and those losses, any losses that are gener- generated, if your income exceeds between 100 and 150, if there's a phase out. So if those losses that they might have sustained were suspended, then that increases the basis, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. So that further reduces the tax liability. So it becomes quite complicated. I, I, I know we've done audits. We helped people with mm-hmm. audits just in that scenario. And we had explained to the auditor what suspended losses were Uh-oh. because they don't like that. <laughs> yeah, because they, they, they say, ah, oh, we're going to get some money today. Yep, yep. Not. Now, let's. And then let's do another thing. What option does she have? That's to what not I was just going to ask altogether? you. She could do a 1031 exchange mm-hmm. where she could exchange this rental property for another rental property or or investment property. Or investment property, yep. And pay no taxes until it that finally property. sells. Or she dies and the person inherits it. Absolutely. So there's a lot, and we are trying to get Russ Gullo back on the radio to talk about this because we think there's a lot of people who have no clue what that is, and they might go, it's not worth it. Well, let's just say here, Roberta's husband is still alive, and they were to sell it. They'd be paying tax roughly on $265,000. Right, and the state of New York gives you no benefit. Right, so you're looking plus the extra Medicare tax right. because they're going to be right. over 250. Right. You're looking 15 Don't plus the about 4 plus 8% for New York State. Right. So 23, 27% plus Tiff said Irma. So they're looking a lot of money's going to taxes where if they did this exchange they wouldn't have to pay anything right now. Right. And they would be able to take that money from the rental an investment and invested in another type of property as long as it's investment. So, and I know people think, but I don't know how to do an exchange. This sounds so confusing. The truth is the house gets taken care of much like any sale, Mm -hmm. but an exchanger steps in, momentarily takes title to both properties and does the paperwork and then your basis goes to the new property and you don't have to pay taxes. Now, the new property doesn't have to be necessarily a big fancy um, rental property, you know? I mean, it could be something that eventually, let's say you're looking at retirement, you got maybe five years before retirement and you think you'd like to move to North Carolina, you can buy an investment property that you wanna move into eventually Mm move the basis to that property, then in five years you move in and you didn't pay taxes. Right. Or, and then you die and it goes to kids with a stepped up basis. Or how about you don't want the headaches of being a landlord anymore. Right. So you could invest, well, we're in Buffalo, mm-hmm. how, we see these on Dollar, around UB. Dollar UB, Generals. Or even, yeah, the Dollar General buildings, but the new thing is student housing. Yep. These apartments that you see yep. opening up around Amherst yep. that are these student housings, you can invest in it. And what happens is you just get a monthly check. You don't have to deal with the students. You right. don't deal and with And you don't pay the ta- So you didn't pay the taxes. You're not dealing with the students. And it's really a great uh, o- opportunity for you to save a lot of money. Yeah. And again, if that's something you want clarification of, just call us. Uh, go to our website at egtax.com. Call our corporate headquarters. We want to help you. Yeah. Call us before you do something, please. <laughs> because yeah, because once the house is sold, we can't. Because I mean, do how anything. many people, when you did do a sale of a rental property, you tried to sell? You didn't do an exchange. Well, why didn't anybody tell me this? I would right. have done that. Because once you do it and you take that money, it's too late. Right. Absolutely. Um, I got um, a question. It's from Corinne in Lancaster. Tax lady, I am recently divorced mother of two kids. I get alimony of 24000 a year and child support of another 24000 I work part-time waitressing and I make another 8000 or so a year. I don't think I have to file. Isn't that correct? I know I haven't for the last two years and I haven't received any notices, but my mom says you should ask Esther. Well, I want to tell you, you're not getting notices because you got big refunds coming, right? Oh, yes. Absolutely. So 
in this, it's really interesting. In a post-1998 divorce? 2018. 2018. 2018. Good. Good. I'm back with the horse in the <laughs> 2018 divorce. Your alimony is completely tax-free on the federal tax bill in New York State. Mm-hmm. And your child support is completely tax-free. So in this case, she knew 48000 I don't have to pay taxes on. On the other eight, her standard deduction as head of the household is way more than that. So she, in her mind, she thinks... I don't have to pay taxes. It's true. But you have big refunds coming. Yep. And yeah, for those on New two York, years. On the federal, you have probably around $3,000 in the child tax credit plus the earned income credit of another 4000 4, So you could have $7,000 coming back from the federal. The federal alone. And another uh, couple year. thousand for New York State. So right. that's 10000 a year. That's $20,000. Right. Yeah. So and, you're you're right. You didn't have to file. You just want to file. Yeah. So get those returns in ASAP. And I'm gonna. I'm Esther Gillies, the tax lady from EG Tax. Um, you can uh, get a hold of us at our, through our website at egtax.com. Don't forget about our upcoming tax school and our seminar. I'm gonna take a short break for the news. We'll be back on the other side. Hi, I'm Esther Gillies, the tax lady from EG Tax. We just want to thank you for listening to our show. Uh, because of you, these questions make it so interesting. If you need help before you do something, you can call us uh, at 632-7886. Go to our website at egtax.com. We have an upcoming tax school, tuition free. You would love it. Don't forget about that. And our upcoming seminar. Yep. Okay. And I'm joined in studio with Christopher Fabian, Tiffany Fabian, What do we got here? Um, Just circling back to that other question, and you guys might have already hit on this, child support is not taxable um, ever, so that's something. But my gosh, that money that she makes on waitressing will give her this wonderful earned income credit. So so don't forget to file and file those past years. Right, but on the state, she has to pay taxes on the alimony. Correct, right, right, right. Taylor, which is so confusing, Taylor in Chictawaga writes, "Uh, Tax lady, I am a full-time college student with three small kids. I live on child support and help from Social Security with a small social services. Social services. Social services sorry, um, I was thinking disability. Social services with a small salary of 10k. I pay daycare after my assistance from social services of 3,000, uh, which is 1,000 apiece. Do I get another anything back for paying daycare? And this is Taylor. Okay, so we have to make some assumptions here. She's the head of the household. Mm-hmm. Right, yep. three small kids, daycare, and a salary of ten thousand. So, what she gets back from paying daycare is small potatoes, and that's only on New York State. Right, and but but she, she gets a big earned income credit. Yep. She gets a refundable child tax credit. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. On the federal, she doesn't have a refundable daycare credit, but on the state of New York, she gets earned income credit. And the Empire State credit, and she gets a refundable daycare credit. Yep, yep. Right. So yes, you do, but only on the state. And this always drives us crazy. New York State will probably send her a letter. That's true. And say, please send us proof of your payments Mm -hmm. for daycare. Right. Because we don't think you paid for it. It really doesn't say that, but that's what they're (laughs) implying. And so if she paid by cash... They won't allow it. They won't allow it. Even if she has receipts, they I won't. have to believe that if somebody took them to court, they would lose. Right, right. I know. And, I mean, when you're dealing with a poor little lady like Taylor here, she doesn't have the wherewithal or the money to do it. You know. Well, that's, that's their point, saying, how did you pay it? Because you paid by cash. Who's to say it wasn't mom who gave you the money or grandma? <laughs> Gave you the money pay for daycare, so you didn't pay for but it. But if Grandma your mother did. gave you a gift, if it was a gift, right. exactly. But you're but right. He, Somebody but here's should. the point: you need, if you're doing daycare on New York State and it's a refundable credit, you have to have canceled checks or credit card or credit card receipt. Yep. If you don't want a problem, which is strange because you could put it on your Discover card, and then. Mom slash grandma pays the bill. can pay your discovery, right. but that's okay. 
Right. But if she gives you cash to pay it directly, they're not going to allow it. So I think you're definitely right. Someone should challenge that. In I would court. love somebody to do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. so, but Taylor, you got money coming back. And yes, you'd end up with a small refund on the state of New York. It is refundable for daycare. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. He, so in this forget. situation, if she didn't have the salary and she didn't have to file, but all she had uh, was uh, socials, the, the, the daycare that she paid for New York State, she would still be able to get the daycare credit in New York State without wages because yes. she's in college. Right. Right. Exactly. So they still get let you count the, your the, what would have been uh, wages because you're a full-time college student or if you're looking for work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, and, and then, geez, Louise, uh, yeah, don't forget she's going to get wonderful earned income credits. So make sure that she files and um, she's going to be singing Dixie and, and happy come tax season. Right. Yeah, yeah. You got a question? Okay, what do we yep. got? We got Steve writes in, tax lady, I want to start planning for when I have to do RMDs. Right now I am 65, just retired. My projected income is Social Security of 2500 a month and a small New York State pension of 500 a month. Right now, between my IRA and 401k, I have about $3 million. My wife was a great saver and made me put away money in any available plan that was unavailable. Unfortunately, she passed away two years ago, so I rolled her IRA into mine. I want to honor her and keep as much money as I can in there, but I also want to enjoy my life and don't want the government to get it. Any suggestions on what I can do? Ooh, Esther's brain is thinking. Well, I mean, it's in an IRA. Right. So if he's somebody that is philanthropic, he could do the QCD right. on the on the. For up to a hundred thousand dollars, and that would that would save him income taxes. But again, he's giving away the money, so it all depends on what his motivation is. Right, right. Well, he could also probably take out eight thousand dollars a year and pay no taxes and put Absolutely. it in his bank account. Absolutely, because his income is so low that the standard deduction is going to cover that. So. And that's what happens a lot of times is that people don't understand that even though you don't have to take it out because you're not 73, you might want to take it out because you're not going to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. And that money then becomes a chunk of money that you can put away over here and let it grow and you won't have to pay taxes on it. And utilizing this time now is so important. Right. Right. And, you know, and that's, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. They don't, well, I don't have to, so why should I? Right. Because it's tax-free. Right. But then I could But I don't need the money. Then what am I going to do with the money? Put it into an investment. But then I'm going to have to pay taxes on that money. (laughs) But what's so funny, I could see people fighting us on that and saying their next, well, then, you know what? I'm just going to, because if it's tax-free, I'm just going to roll over a hundred thousand dollars a year in a Roth because then that money's tax free at seventy three. Right, but and I don't have But to. when you roll it over you pay the taxes <laughs> now. Mm-hmm. And all the future growth on that money that you're paying in taxes now is gone. Yep. So I mean so you really it, it's a good question. We do get this a lot. But yet yeah, tax planning uh, definitely call us so we can run the numbers and give you exactly what you could take out and pay no tax no or very right. little tax. I right. mean, even if you pay 10%, because on $3 million, let's, what, $3 million divided by 26.5 is, doing the math real fast, that's $113,000 he would have to take out at 73. That's if, that's if it, it stays, stays at, at three, 3. And doesn't but grow. But it's going to grow. Right. right. So if you can take money out now at 10% and help bring down that RMD, what a great thing. And then like you said, too, the QCD, the Qualified Charitable Distribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if he gives... Yeah, because he talked about honoring his wife's memory. Maybe she was a volunteer 
uh, for an organization and he wants to bless that organization every year. Or maybe she was somebody that liked to give money to church. If you're using the QCD, the Qualified Charitable Rollover, the money goes directly from your IRA to the charity and you don't pay taxes on it. That's right. Right. And and if you're a person who is hit with Irma, you avoid Irma, and so That's right. lots of good angles. And you tell, really tell people know. what Irma is, Chris. You do is good that with Fred Irma, Flintstone, Wilma, Wilma, and Irma. Uh, yeah, the next door neighbor. No, um, Irma is what you pay for Medicare through your Social Security. Mm-hmm. It all depends on what your what your income is. The more the income is, the more you pay. The more the Irma is. Right? Yep. Right, yep, and right. we've seen people. So, like, so, like, if you sell a rental this year and you're gaining four hundred thousand, your Irma is going to go through the roof. You're going to pay about six hundred dollars a month, extra, extra for your for your Medicare. Right, and, and there's nothing you can do about not it. Not not for that. Right. Unless there's, there's a, you could petition it if there's an unusual set of circumstances, but not for this set of circumstances. Not for selling a rental property. Not for this set of circumstances. Yes. Okay, what else we got here? Um, I've got a question here. It says, Steve, a tax lady, I want to start planning. Just did oh, you know, I knew that. I knew that. I was doing Pete. Um, <laughs> I started my own business this year, Pete says to Esther, and it's called Lawn and Snow Care Incorporated. My question is that I'm getting a different advice on whether I should be an LLC, corporation, or just a DBA. What is your opinion? Also, do you need any snow plowing services? In the yes, I do, Pete. <laughs> Give us a call. Um, Protection. So here's the thing. When you're doing anything is, it, and you're making money and you don't want to get sued because something might happen, um, if you have something to shelter, protect your assets from something that might go wrong in your business by using an LLC or a corporation, then that's a very wise thing because all they can do is take, as long as you haven't been, they found that you haven't been, um, what's the word? Embezzling? Well, no, that you're frivolous, that you oh, haven't really been following okay. the law. Gotcha. You're you're protected, as, especially this year, um, looking at the LLC or the the uh, subchapter S corporation to want to make sure that you do the beneficial ownership information with the Department of Treasury. Anybody listening, you got to do that. It's very important. the The penalties can be up to ten thousand dollars for not filing that. But this guy, he's got all that heavy equipment. God forbid he might be chopping down a tree, you know, and accidentally the branch breaks and somebody gets hurt. If he has the LLC and the 1120S, he can, uh, you know, and somebody sues him as long as he wasn't grossly negligent, that's the word. his assets are protected, and okay. that's really important. We are in New York State. All these attorneys are hanging around here. Right. And right. we're going to talk about this on the other side. I got a break for news, so we will answer more of this question on the other side. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, with Tiffany Fabian, Christopher Fabian from EG Tax. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We were talking about the state of New York and when there's you know, it's pretty litigious out there. And whenever you have a business, it does not hurt, I think, to make sure that you're an LLC or a corporation. Now, the LLC, you still file on a Schedule C, just like your sole proprietor, where you are a sole proprietor. A corporation becomes a little more complicated. But the thing is, you're protecting your assets, right? Yep. Yep. You're protecting your assets. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I this just brought back. I remember hearing a story from your mom. You, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you would have had a a great uncle. But when he this oh, that's true. My that was my cousin. Oh, your cousin, right? My cousin was 12 years old, riding his bike along just a carefree send some summer afternoon running his bike alongside of the field and they and the state of Michigan, it was in Michigan, had those big boom grass cutters out there, the big things, and they at that point in time they didn't put any protection. And one of the blades <laughs> hit a rock and it went through the air and cut my cousin Jeff in half. 
Right. So strange things do happen. Do happen. I know it's a so sad story. A, a lot of business owners ask, would it be better to get insurance instead of becoming an LLC? Okay, or- well, here's the thing. I would do both. Yeah, yeah. Because whatever protection you can get in the event of something. I mean, look at that that uh, ship that just sank, sank not long ago in um, Italy. The yacht. Did you hear about that? Yes, I, yes, yes, yes. And uh, they're still was, finding people. Right. I mean, I mean, things. The the yacht guy is now being. They're looking at putting him in jail so right. for both, manslaughter. Both is a good idea. So, uh, protecting yourself with something as simple as a corporation or an LLC is so wise. Yep. 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 Because, you know, you're going to look back and say, I should have paid that $200 we 40 years ago. We live in a very lit- litigatable society. Right. You know? And you just, you know, when you're doing, ha- and no matter what it is, and so you might say, oh, well, I'm just a nurse practitioner and I don't need to do that. Okay. And somebody dies and they say it was your fault. I mean, it's, it just can be horrible. Or let's say that you're you're a professional and you gave gave advice and somebody followed your advice and they say it cost us money and so they're suing you. It's just really a wise thing to do to do an LLC or an eleven twenty S. And right. and like you said, you have to do it on the up and up. Right. You, because lawyers, our daughter's a lawyer and I still say they suck. Um <laughs> But they will dive into everything. If they dive into your bookkeeping and see you deposited, you know, Bob Smith paid you $300 to do his snow plowing, and that went into your personal account and not the LLC account or the corporate account, they could pierce that. That's exactly right. So do it right. Report all your, and I'm not just saying this in in the business account. All business income and expenses are in a business account. I know people feel like like when I get my nails done, it really just grinds me because they'll say, "Can you pay me in 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 cash for my tip?" And I say, "No, I have to pay taxes on all my income. You have to pay taxes Mm -hmm. on all your income." Yep. And then they say, oh, it's okay to put it on the credit card. Yeah, because I say then if you don't want a tip, that's fine. No, 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 you can put it on the credit card. (laughs) Right, right. But let's, 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 we'll, we'll pick on what was it, Tom or whoever, whatever. Say he only reported $15,000 worth of income a year. And after expenses, Pete, Pete. um, say after expenses, that came down to only $3,000 on his tax return. Right. And that's what he did for 30 years. He showed income of $3,000. What happens when he's 65? He doesn't get much Social Security. Yeah. Right. His Social yeah. Security, he hasn't yeah. been contributing good to the point. system. Very good point. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, claiming the inc- don't claiming the income, you think, ah, I screwed the government. Guess what? You're screwing yourself in the end. Yep. And... And you don't have a pension plan. Yep. And if you wanted to buy a house, you don't qualify for a mortgage. Yep. You know, I mean, and and because you have so little income, you pay more for health insurance. I mean, you pay more for uh, car insurance and liability insurance because you have no income. So. And I, I've seen it. We, one of our daughter's friends, the father owns a car place and they were looking to buy a house. And they had to put it on hold for three years because his tax return showed very little income. Income. Right. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. income that you receive is not subjective. It is actual. So what you actually get, cash, checks, charges, all go on that income. That's the way it is. And then all of your expenses that you paid that are legitimately deductible reduce that that income so that you pay taxes on the net profit that's right that's right and you really want to do a great job with your bookkeeping and it's really important to have a a great set of books i can't tell you enough right okay 
And so I got a pastor one. A pastor one. Okay. Yeah, name withheld. E.G. Tax. I'm a pastor of a church in Buffalo. I get a salary of 35000 plus a housing allowance of 20000 approximately. We spend all of the housing on housing. I have two kids under the age of 18. No other sources of income except for some wedding and funerals for another 1000 Why do I pay so much in taxes? Okay. Tax. I, and I think this is, I, I think pastors really are shocked because they're considered a dual status taxpayer. Right. They're cons- they're paid on the W-2 like they're an employee, but they have to pay their own Medicaid, Medicare, Medicare and F- uh, and social security. So they pay they pay the the whole uh, amount for themselves. The church doesn't pay for it. So in this situation, you look at 15.3% on the thirty-five thousand plus income taxes, and on the twenty thousand dollars parsonage, he doesn't have to pay income tax on that, but he does have to pay FICA. 15.3. So right. he's paying thirty-five plus twenty, which is fifty-five plus the thousand dollars. So it's fifty-six times fifteen point three, FICA about alone. eight thousand dollars. Right now, what a lot of pastors don't know is they can reduce. That twenty, that housing allowance by non-reimbursed business expenses. That's right. So, so travel, I always say to my pastors, "Did you? Are they giving you money for visitation in your that you drive to? Uh, how about Bibles and study courses and, and, and dry cleaning your cell his, phone his, and his yeah, vestments and yeah. are they paying for that or do you pay for that out of your salary? Continuing and education. if he, they do pay for it out of their salary, they can reduce the FICA on the non-reimbursed expenses, and that'll save them some money. Yep. And so there again, (laughs) keeping really good track and keeping your receipts, taking people out to dinner, uh, reasonable gifts that are $50 or under, um, and and, um, continuing ed and and entertainment. Okay, but here's something on here that I think is interesting. He's got two kids under the age of 18. Right. So on one hand, he's paying the 15.3% on on the $51,000, right? Right. But on the other hand, he's got credits of $4,000 that he didn't pay in. Yep. Right? And it looks like he'd also get an earned income credit. That's right. Right? Because we, we yeah. don't know the piece about his wife. So if he's been doing his return correctly, he could have. He should not be that far upside down. Yep. Because the credits will cover his uh, FICA. No. Do you? Do you know why it's only pastors of churches? And why isn't it the secretary? Why can churches withhold Social Security for secretaries and janitors and everybody else, but just pastors? I don't, because they're dual status. That's all I know. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm thinking if really, I was pastors, I would Well, say. and then the, the other thing is when you become the first year that of your ordination or licensure as a pastor, you can opt out of the FICA. I was just thinking which, that. Which um, I don't think is a very good idea. It's a great idea when you're young because you forget that you're going to get old. But when you do get old, you're going to wish that you had the Social Security. That's right. But yep. you can opt out. Right, yep. if you're so inclined. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, and, so. and if you're a pastor, we really... We know to pastor stuff. Yes, yep. yes. It's very confusing. And, and it's, it is. Got it's, a fast one here. All right. What is the credit for buying an electric car? Do hybrids get the credit as well? So um, some hybrids do. They got to be plug-in hybrids. So if you have a gas-first hybrid, that doesn't count. It's got to be a plug-in car that qualifies. And it's up to, depending on the make and the model and all that, up to $7,500, a non-refundable credit. credit. And, so, and then talking about, you're going to talk about when you could pass it on to the dealer, right? Right. But you've got to make sure you have the income. And it is a fully po- portable credit, is it yeah. not? Yeah. I mean, you can assign that credit to whomever you want. It's so weird. Um, and the state of New York also kicks in. Yeah, at the at the dealership, right, right, up right. to two thousand. You because there's an income threshold of four hundred thousand. Right, um, on a joint return. On a joint return, also leases don't count. Right, leases the dealership should be re- using that because they get the credit. That's correct. They should be reducing. They should be using that credit as a down payment 
on that vehicle to help reduce your monthly cost. Right. So you got to work it out with your dealer if you're leasing. And and, it's, and, and the rules are so confusing because it it has to have certain minerals that were mined in a, the United States or Canada or Mexico. So the dealer is who would be the the front end person telling you whether this qualifies. If you don't know, though, we have all kinds of documentation that we can help you walk through um, when you're doing your return. Right. All right. You can just call EG Tax at 632-7886. Our website is egtax.com. Ask the tax lady. You can... Uh, you can ask us any question. We'll get back right away to you. Anyway, I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady with Christopher Fabian, Tiffany Fabian. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with your live phone calls.